This is Movies, a podcast about the act of cinema. And with me today, wouldn't you know it, it is Hans Lam Barboza. How are you tonight, sir? Hey, good. What's up? Are we doing full names now? Is this, is this, is this going to become a theme you now? Are you nervous? You starting to sweat a little no. bit? No, it's fine. I'm sure. It's fine. You're sure it's fine? <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've said anything controversial for the last, I don't know, what, a hundred episodes, let's say. So don't go digging. We've definitely taken a woke turn with the show, yeah. where we're try we're very, you know, conscious with what we say, mm -hmm. worried about the sponsors. But hey, you know who isn't? Is Dakota Proctor, our special guest tonight? How are you doing, Dakota? Be sure to unmute yourself before you speak. I'm great, and I'm uh, ready to uh, throw down the gauntlet and let's get spicy. Wonderful. That's <laughs> that's my type of guy. All right. Uh, well, we are talking about. It's a very fitting theme because we are talking about. Perhaps the final work of Lars von Trier, one of my favorite filmmakers. Um, he has Parkinson's or something. I don't know. I caught some interview oh. with him back in 2020, right after House of Jack Built came out. And he was in a bathrobe and he had long, shaggy hair. And he was wearing a floral shirt. And his hands were just, you know, he had Michael J. Fox syndrome. It was pretty disturbing to see. But, you know, he is an older man. And Hans, you're an older man. What do you think about Lars von Trier? Uh, I think he's great. He's um one of the very few Why? still out uh, here voices, you know, they still have their own style and can all of his movies are his movies, you can tell exactly by just watching five minutes, which is very difficult now, especially with from someone that's as controversial as he is. Like he just doesn't care. And that's admirable, I think. Well, you're wearing an eraser head shirt today. Is that like you're trying yeah. to be close to the theme, like one auteur? Oh yeah. It's the only David Lynch shirt that I own. So, yeah, it was planned. Just like every shirt that I wear on the show, it's planned. Now, how many Joe Dante shirts do you own compared to David Lynch? Do I know any Joe Dante movies? Why don't you figure that out while I ask Dakota his opinion on yeah. Lars von Trier? Dakota, what do you think about Lars von Trier? He's always been one of my favorites. Um, I think I was like getting into screenwriting in college, and I remember watching i think it was the time nymphomaniac came out so that was one of my favorites of that year um yeah i'm sad that this could be his last one um i think house that jack built is you know pretty much summed up his work so uh this is a little more or the hot uh, the kingdom is a little more episodic you know and uh it was okay. Um, but yeah, overall, Breaking the Waves, I love Dogville. Um, I think I've seen about everything he's done. I've never seen Dancer in the Dark, but I've seen his first one, Idiots, Melancholia, um, Antichrist. So I've seen about everything he's done at this point. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's sad, you know, it's like you, you, you Wikipedia him and the second, the second sentence is this, this is a very controversial filmmaker. And it's, it's frustrating that, uh, you know, I think uh, the actions or the perception of people is, especially an artist kind of is, supersedes the work continually more and more. So I hope, you know, younger filmmakers like you and others can embrace the cringe and just move forward through that. I, I try to do that with my own work, I think, you know, um, which draws ire from time to time uh, or me personally draws ire. So uh, Lars has always been close to my heart. He's definitely someone who I look up to. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope we can be more forgiving and uh, graceful in, in, in the next year, you know, and uh, allow allow more fun, controversial work to uh exist and not just have it you know boiled down to the bullet points yeah i think we're going in that direction a little bit a little bit we'll we'll see how it goes in the next year and a half when people suddenly decide that personal politics matter uh again or matter as much yeah. again we'll see what what happens then you know his his whole controversy at i think it was can or something yeah. uh is such a non-controversy and the fact that this like took off at all and Kirsten Dunst had to like distance herself from him because he was making a joke that sounded 
not like a joke because of his accent and English being his second language is so um, foolish. Well, and she then, she uh, she distanced herself so much from him that she has no career now. Isn't that great? How that she works? was supposed to be in that <laughs> Spider-Man movie too. She was like the first yeah. cast member announced for that new spot, and then they thought, you know, I think we're probably better without her. We don't need this fifty-year-old woman stinking up the the set. So they just had her stay home that day. And then the the second thing that he got hit with was a Me Too by Bjork because of Dancer in the Dark. Which wasn't was, even really it was an a allegation too. of an allegation, you know. Yeah. She never even. She's like something may. It's yeah. It's she annoying. didn't name him. She did she write didn't. like I think a uh, lengthy Facebook post that basically said a director I work and she's done like three movies, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so she said everything but she was in that Northman movie as a creepy witch or something. She was decent in that in a very small role. Also, Dancer in the Dark. If anyone wants to check it out, Dakota, if you want to check it out, it's on YouTube for free. So that's how I watched it. Oh, yeah. But it's very long. It's mm -hmm. long. It's musical. Uh, it's not. It's a lot like his other films, but it's not a whole lot like his other films. Uh, you know, with Lars, I find his earliest movies the most inaccessible. The Europa Trilogy. Um, uh, what was it? Scene of a Crime. I, th those weren't really my cup of tea. Those are all very high. Although I do appreciate how uh, stylized they are. I think that's pretty admirable and um, just interesting to look at, although I don't know if the, the content of those movies really uh, is worth the weight of the, the sets and costumes and everything else. When you get into his mid nineties work where he does like a soft reboot of his career, it's his first career uh, kind of reset when he gets into Dogma 95, does Breaking the Waves, um, Idiots, moves on to uh, Dancer in the Dark. Then I think uh, that version of Lars von Trier is very interesting. And this late career version that he's taken, I think that really begins with anti Antichrist, where he becomes this uh, novelesque filmmaker, kind of like Tarantino did when he began doing these three-hour epics with uh, Once Upon a... Not Once Upon a Time, sorry. Uh, Inglorious Bastards, Django, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, he, he has a sort of uh, new form he takes on, and it's these big, enormous spectacles. That's my favorite version of Lars von Trier. Mm -hmm. uh, Nymphomaniac, the, the entire near five-hour director's cut, I've got that on my shelf. I think that's a terrific, excellent film. Second to his final movie, House of Jack Built, which I think... By comparison to those other movies, it's kind of just like a nice, cute, concise, and very funny final chapter in his career. When we land at Kingdom Exodus, it feels like a coda. It just feels like him fucking around, like he's, he, he's just doing extra credit. It's just yeah. a little spare time on the side to you know, uh, buy time until his death. Because there's not a whole lot here to this. I had, now, full disclosure, I decided to watch this season of The Kingdom without ever having seen a full episode of The Kingdom prior to this one. And Dakota, I think you might have said you jumped in all the same, or did you check out this I went back story? and I watched the first season for context. And mm -hmm. essentially, this is the same plot as the original two, two seasons, but he has changed the characters a little bit but there is essentially an analogous character from that 90s version to now. So you had like uh, Karen, there was a character called Mrs. Druce, who was also like falsely admitted and was into the occult. And there's, you've got Helmer Jr. in this one, the original Dr. Helmer. And he's and, there, and there, a lot of the jokes are the same too. So like Helmer will take his hubcaps off uh, his car every day and Helmer Jr. does as well. Um, so it feels like, yeah, I, I agree. He kind of is um, not, he's retreading, he's retreading old ground a little bit, I guess. Um, and I, and I really liked that first episode, but I felt like each successive episode was almost the same kind of beats. It was elevating a little bit, but I feel like less happened overall than uh than even the original season uh that i watched 
kind of to give me some context for what was happening. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know why he made it. Maybe he, maybe he is out of ideas. Maybe he just wanted to have fun. It is funny. Um, and there's still a lot of that kind of dry satire, but I'm, I, I'm not, I don't really, know, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it in a way. I, the more I think about it, the less I, the less I've been able to kind of hold on to in a way. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I will say I was not expecting it to be nearly as funny as it was. I had a real good time watching the yeah. show. But similar to you, by the time we got to that finale, I was like, all right, well, what is, what is this amounting to? Um, and the answer is, I think he just wanted to kill everyone off because he's expecting his own death and put a yeah. cap on that series, kind of similar to how David Lynch did Twin Peaks The Return, where he's just going to experiment and do something different within the same world of that um and do something metaphorical for himself uh hans what did you think of the kingdom exodus i really liked the first three episodes and i think the last two lacked a little bit of bite that the first three episodes have and i guess it's because um we're getting to know the characters so uh it's it's more interesting uh i was a little underwhelmed by the end uh the the ghosts or the spirits like that whole thing looked really shitty uh compared to everything else which is great when it comes to the effects that scene with like the two what is it like two the ponds yeah to the, with the ponds uh that it looked very early 2000s you know and everything else um i mean maybe the heart like the big heart that one kind of looked kind of fake but i feel like everything else uh, the weirder it got, uh, the better it was, at least for me. And at the end, I just feel like maybe he just didn't know how to end in because it's really just, it was very underwhelming, especially with what's set up at the beginning. And the, the relationships between the characters in the first three episodes, I think, are very interesting. And then at the end, that kind of falls apart. Mm. Uh, so so by the last episode, I was I, when I was halfway done with it, I was like, I don't even know what to say about this. Like, it's very, like... Like, I didn't really care about the ending that much. But the first three, I thought, were great. Uh, at times, if it kind of felt like a like a foreign version of the Ricky Gervais office, where the way that they would interact with each other and how, you know, this, this whole Danish world for a Swede was so foreign and so unfair to him and how he started as, like, this progressive, like, woke, very inclusive, person and then by the end of it he becomes like a swedish nationalist type of thing where he's just like no we are the only ones that matter and fuck everyone else so i really enjoyed that and i thought yeah that it was much funnier than i was expecting very off color very uh, uh i guess yeah funny you know in a way that i guess only people from that side of the world can be which is very dry and and kind of weird you know yeah i you know something that this series reminded me of frequently was Garth Marenghi's Dark Plays. Mm -hmm. I was getting tons of flashbacks to that show. Uh, have you ever seen that, Dakota? Never, no. It's definitely worth your time. Uh, who does that star? Matt Berry and uh, Richard Aote. Yeah. And we watched that a little bit when we were filming back in, in March 2020, but I've been familiar with it since it around the time that it aired. And uh, it's kind of like a mockumentary of a procedural night soap uh, and also Stephen King. And it's a very enjoyable show. I think the entire series is on YouTube in yeah. full. And it's only like four or five episodes. This Six. frequently seemed to echo that show, but also on a similar note to what you were saying, Hans, it, you know, you did have vibes of Ricky Gervais's The Office in there. Uh, who Who is your favorite character among this roster of characters uh i like the the and i think we talked about this on dms the uh, mats mickelson's brother uh the that doctor i thought he was really funny what's his lars i think his name is um mm -hmm. in like real life uh because his whole, yes because his whole character is just like i don't even want to be here like i'm supposed to be the what well, the director or the head doctor and he's trying to do everything but be a doctor uh, and he's very goofy, very unserious. Uh, I liked him. I I also really enjoyed the uh, the janitor doctor 
uh the only black <laughs> person on the show is just like he always tries to avoid the Swedish doctor so that he doesn't know that he's not a that he's an actual gender. Uh that that whole um subplot, I guess, thought was really funny and, and, and really creative as to show, you know, the the hypocrisy of of trying to just do, you know, diversity for sake of it and then how he gets fooled by, you know, a janitor who but the only thing that uh the the doc the other doctor did was just what give him like a uh a lab coat and that's it and then he was still a janitor but he believed that he was a doctor just by that so that was that was really good so i guess those two i enjoyed a lot the characters are confusing i can't ever tell if um if they're supposed to be like stan you know it's like it was hard for me to care about them like it was almost mm -hmm. too like i was trying to place Pontipadon, you know, like, is he supposed to just represent kind of like a liberal, ineffectual, like, I couldn't tell if the characters were supposed to be characters or, um, you know, a stand in for yeah. some social issue, you know what I mean? Like, it almost, they lacked heart in a way. And I, and that, that's what <clears throat> gave me trouble with engaging them at times. But uh, I still liked, uh, you know, David Bowie as as Helmer is great. <laughs> uh, are there any overlap characters with that original series that come back? I think the guy with the green mohawk. The guy with the green mohawk was um, the love interest of the woman who gives birth to giant Udo Kier's head. Um, so that's in the plot in the first one. She basically has a pregnancy over a week. And, and, and gives birth to this giant, you know, gives birth to Udo Kier, um, who, you know, I guess eventually turns into a giant head. The Yuhu lady is the mistress of Helmer's dad. So mm. the original Helmer. But I couldn't really tell much of what she was supposed to be. I mean, it's hilarious. She's the log lady, essentially. She's the log lady. Yeah, yeah that's I what mean, I just kept I, thinking. I, I, you know, to, to get back to the point of like comparing it to shows, like I feel like this is very indebted to the return, you know, especially with like Hans's comment about the shitty effects. Like I feel like David Lynch does that all the time too. Like he'll just have a superimposed image of a head floating by and it'll look really fake, you know? So I don't know. Yeah, but I agree, you know, the purple the purple CGI ghosts yeah. while the camera's like doing the, like <laughs> whatever that digital effect is where it's like going in and out was like you know, jarring, but uh It was jarring because he I don't think he did anything like that for most of it. Uh yeah. what, what what is the most that we got when it comes to visual effects like atmospheric like that? Um uh some steam and some, you know, cl clouds, I guess, cloudy out outdoors and that's it and this was the first time where kind of i don't know it gave me like spawn flashbacks and that's never good you know? how about the uh he did the like face mask on i, I think of a couple of dead actors maybe at the very end oh, when they're yeah. dancing on top of the roof <laughs> and you can see too. that they're just grafted onto and it looks horrible you can see like where it begins it looks like if you picked up snapchat or an it's instagram horrible. story filter and did it that way, and then just implemented it into the series. It looks horrible. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think he really cares either. I think it is completely intentional on on Lars's part because he may, maybe not in the same way that David Lynch would think about it and have some like actual reason in his mm -hmm. head as to why this cheap graphic makes sense. But I think Lars von Trier is just like, yeah. They'll just think it's intentional. Who cares? Let's just let's just go ahead with it. What do we have here? <laughs> I, have this, right. I liked this part. It was, it was very evocative. There you yes. go. There's one. That's yeah, one. <laughs> oh. Ooh. That's like a PlayStation One game. Yeah. <laughs> and then this one too. Ah, there you go. There's another. Yeah. Is that it? I think that's yeah. it. It was just the two. Yeah. Very just I think jarring. they're in the original series and they're probably dead. A lot of the actors from that original died and that's why he couldn't do his third season back then. Like his two main actors died. 
So I think he probably got back everyone who's still alive, but everyone else got an analogous character. Like there's another like fat older orderly guy who's like the boulder guy who is the who's the uh occult lady's son in the original, but it's all kind of the same, you know, it's just they're trying to figure out where the spirits are in the hospital. But, you know, you I couldn't tell. I mean, I liked it, you know, but the the occult stuff, I would have rather seen more of the kind of like Me Too commentary or racial commentary or the, I mean, the funniest thing is the fact that he's a Swede in, in Denmark, which is like two white, like two groups of white people being unhappy. And it's, it's funny, I just watched uh, Pusher uh, this past week and they had a similar joke in there in Pusher One where they're like, we'll go anywhere but Sweden. So there must be some yeah. sort of rivalry between those two countries. I don't know, but it's it's still funny. And yeah, bringing in the bringing in the black the black orderlies to be doctors in that first scene just <laughs> killed me. Um, it's def, it's def, it, it might just be a big fu, like a big arty fu. I don't know because it's just. I think I think there's definitely hints of that in the house that Jack built, and even uh, to a degree in Nymphomaniac. Mm -hmm where you can feel him looking to rile people up a little bit intentionally and being inflammatory to, to bait the usual critics. Um, so I do think there's definitely a little bit of that here in this, in this series. Uh, on the topic of rivalries, are you at all interested in checking out that Copenhagen Cowboy series that uh, Refn is putting out on Netflix? And I think it comes out January 5th. So it should be right around the corner. Well, I'm definitely going to watch it because I do a show with you. So I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure we're going to have to talk about it sooner or later. Uh, I don't know. We haven't I... talked about Too Old to Die Young on this show. We did it on, on Cisco's show for what appears to be the final episode of that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I have gone back to it actually because here's, here's the thing for you guys who listen to that episode of Drunk on Movies. I listened uh, to it. You listened to it? All right. Well, here's a little tidbit for you. Uh, I did not, and I don't believe Hans, you, you did either. And actually, neither did J. David Osborne or Kelby go back and watch Too Old to Die Young to do that yeah. show because we were just all like, that's a lot of work. That's that's a, what, 12-hour show where it's a lot of lingering stares for many episodes at a time. But I I've, watched and I think Hans admitted it on the, on the yeah. episode. You said you watched like the first three and then skipped to the yeah. end. Mm -hmm. And then I you're like, well, you skipped the best lot. episodes. Yeah, because I that's what I I think I asked you, Lawrence. I was like, which ones are the good episodes, the ones that I need to watch? Because it's a lot. Like you, like we're doing now. We're doing a show on on a series that has five forty minute episodes. So that's still, I think it's it's not as you know. These were longer. These were ask, like seventy like, minutes. Some of them, yeah. I think this last one, the last one is like fifty seven minutes, fifty eight yeah. minutes. So there were an hour episodes, but it's five, right? You're not asking me to watch fucking set, what ten movies, like whatever yeah. that show is. When I was like, and then the and most of them is just like lingering shots of people looking at each other with low lights. So uh, that was yeah. I don't I don't think I'm ever gonna finish that. So there's well, no you payoff that at the show. end either. But yeah, I went well, back to it because Jake Hanrahan checked it out, and Jake Hanrahan's a notable critic of Refins, and I guess he was just bored or whatever. And uh, he was talking about it. He's like, actually, I think I'm. I think I'm into this show. I was like, what? In what world? Um, and I opted to go back and check out episodes four, five, and six, which I remember being the best episodes. And then it falls apart after that. And I, I watched those three episodes. I was like, oh, yeah, there's actually a lot to enjoy here. But, yeah, the rest is just, I thought it was garbage. I think it, it has a, kind of a slow start and a really atrocious finish. Uh, so I don't, I'm what curious to see what he does with Copenhagen cowboy, considering that show negatively impacted, uh, Amazon prime and, and Amazon's studio division of, of making films, because up until then they were all about giving auteurs money and theatrical releases with their films. And it seemed to stop immediately with that, that didn't get the payoff that they were looking for. Hmm. Was that for a streaming site? That it was. That young? Yeah, that was direct to Amazon Prime. 
Before that, wow. they financed the Neon Demon, uh, Spike Lee's Chirac, uh, I, The Handmaiden, the Park Chan-wook film, and a couple of other movies as well. And now they're in the business of doing, like, shit. Of doing just mm-hmm. shit. I haven't seen anything on Amazon this year, I don't think. It's not really... I, they're more in the business now of, I think, streaming TV shows. Yeah. You know, what is it? Marvelous Miss Maisel is probably their, their flagship program at this point. Mm-hmm. But they used to have... Uh, I remember when they first premiered many of their shows, uh, they got tons of like Emmys and whatnot for Mozart and the Jungle and uh, all these programs that have since ended. Red Oaks was on there. Red Oaks was a Hal Hartley, oh, yeah. David Gordon Green uh, three season series with the kid from Submarine as the star. That was decent. But for the most part, they've just been putting out some pretty unremarkable TV shows. And the movies are even worse. The movies are like Paul Bettany is a gay uncle in 1971 on a road trip with his niece. And it's completely forgotten. <laughs> Do y'all see The Whale? Not yet. No. Uh, and I, I don't know if I will check it out. I, I, I usually like Darren Aronofsky, but I haven't liked him for a while. I really love his early, yeah. early odd style. But everything... I saw it yesterday. What'd you think? Yeah, I mean, he's lost his kind of punch. But you, you're talking about the gay uncle in the 70s. Like, this is the entire problem with the movie is that it's trying to get you to accept a gay fat man in 20... It just feels dated. It feels dated. And it's... I mean, it was a play before. So it's, like, taking place when Trump's getting elected. But it's just, like... I guarantee the whole audience coming to see this already is, like, not fat phobic and not homophobic. So... Your what is the journey, whale? your journey is like law, you know, it's like it should it should start where it ends, you know? Because mm-hmm. he does some other things that are more questionable, but those aren't as touched upon as the fact that he's really fat. You know what I mean? Are you guys talking about the I lost my connection there for like 10 the seconds. Whale. So I, the whale, yeah. I I don't like that it's presented as such a serious, like d- I there's, dare there's you. No like it's I know, but like I feel like Aronofsky's like I dare you to make fun of this movie. It's like I'm going to, you know, like that's the only reason why I want to watch it because I'm, I'm sure there's some like, there's there's also this like anti-Christian message which I I've been actually listening to y'all's podcasts all day today. I listen to the Low Society and the Christmas Story Christmas episodes, and like your point about the fact that we don't have that in our culture anymore Mm -hmm. which is the which is those values is exactly why the whale isn't interesting because they're admonishing this like young missionary guy who's trying to bring christ to him and it's just like i mean like who Mm -hmm. uh it's just like you just picked all like all the it's like all the easy targets of like like 10 years ago it's just like we're not there anymore you know um and i almost felt that with like this a little bit too it's like i wish i wish the me too stuff and the racism stuff went further and i mean like lars is kind of a pussy now like in some interview he's like yeah i went and voted for the most uh liberal uh candidate i could i'm nothing like hitler i'm like dude like bro (laughs) just double down man like come on you're alienating your fan base (laughs) <laughs> yeah. you know it's just it's frustrating it's really annoying and but then you look at the uh, the opposite which would be like a kanye west situation and it's just like there's no there's no way to win there's no nuance it's all bullet points it's all out of context constantly and it's just yeah it's like little things thrown in there just to kind of be like oh we're not going too far you know and it's just like as someone who just spends any moderately time on the internet, you just, you see those and you're just like, oh, well, they're, you know. Yeah, it's weird. It's... Executive or whoever, I don't know. You know, it's like you got someone being like, well, you can't have this in your script. You can have, you can call someone an F, you know, but you can't, you can't use this word. You know, it's just, it just everything, you can see the, 
uh, the dealings almost in the in the way it's presented. You know, it's like the concessions that the director has to make. And I, you know, I don't, I'm not advocating for apocalypse now where we're gonna like kill a cow on camera. And I think, I think Lars has killed animals on camera too. You know, I think there's definitely developments that have been good, you know, in filmmaking process, but it does, I mean, it's like the people y'all celebrate on here and, you know, they're all older now and they're gonna, he even says it in the first, in the first episode in the, in the uh, end credits. And that's another thing I don't know if you saw, but like all the original uh, Kingdom episodes end with Von Trier literally coming out during the credits and like talking to the camera. Right. Um, so in this one, he's just behind the curtain shaking probably, but you know, um, that's what he says. And it's like vanity, you know, it's just like, I think, I don't know, maybe that just happens when you're older, but I think people need to be a little more self-sacrificial when it comes to their art, you know, but it just, it's almost like it's not worth it in a way. It really depends on like it's, what you believe in, I guess, you know, it's like, do you want, do you want your day-to-day -day ruined for, for, for what's maybe more truthful from your, your soul? I don't know. It's weird to hear that there's con constraint coming from someone that kind of forces you to look at Willem Dafoe's balls in slow motion for like 10 minutes. <laughs> you know? Uh, that was, was a like, nice surprise a to see him pop up in this series yeah. also. I don't think yeah. he's credited. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I had no idea he was going to be in the show. Um, yeah, you know, also, before we get away from it, the whole Kanye thing, we didn't really talk about it on this show because it was kind of dated by the time Hans and I got to recording a new episode. But I think the biggest... Uh, takeaway from that whole week of of craziness is it shows how boring everybody is. It shows how boring uh, all all of the like reactive yeah. players responding to that were mm -hmm. to like actually act outraged about like some pretty not interesting statements. I mean, uh, he he went on Infowars and he went on Tim Pool and a bunch of programs and it was like exciting for a second and he didn't say anything that was like super intellectual or 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 what have you it was just like very blanket statements very uh like clearly trying to rile people up and do i'm an artist sort of Enough. thing um and people are like well can't listen to Kanye. i guess we're gonna have to stop listening to kanye and and all this like just very stupid shit i feel like he's done it he's done it like 10 times at this point yeah you know? like he just because she's not a gold he, digger anymore because it's not shekels or golden coins, right? And it's just like what is what are we what are we talking about? Yeah, it's it's really tame and just very predictable. If somebody right? did that in 2006, nobody would give a fuck at all. He wouldn't have lost a billion dollars. At most, he would have had to like go hang out with somebody from the ADL. At most, at the most. Okay. Um it would be considered a non-issue and just like, oh yeah, he's, he's trying to be controversial, I guess. Well, he, he, I think he walked out of that Tim pool show because it's very embarrassing to be on that show. To be in Tim pool's they... attic and doing <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. that show with his smelly beanie and his cast. It's like, hey, this is where I skateboard. Do you like my skate? This is Charlemagne the God. <laughs> he misses Rick Rubin. Yeah, my favorite, my favorite aspect pool. about that Tim pool interview was that, on his way out, he grabbed a handful of cookies that were on the counter, <laughs> a whole row of cookies, and left. And then what, Nick Fuentes, who's a forgotten figure from like five, ten years ago? That I What a big is... reprieve for Nick Fuentes and Milo. Milo is mm -hmm. more forgotten than Nick, I think, at this point. And he had a greater fall, too. In 2016 and 2017... He was on, he was on Bill Maher. Yeah. That was the end. That was the end of the line. Then they decided to coordinate behind the scenes <laughs> and the we're going to spin this thing and boom, he's gone. And it was so effective. It was it was gone in a flash. He had his book that he didn't write that was like a bestseller for a day or two and he had a billboard in Times Square. He was huge for like a political commentator from the yeah. internet. Uh, he was pretty big and it all disappeared. I think no one will be big anymore. You know, I think in order to be big, you got to be boring, you know? So I don't know. It's like, I don't, I, I go back and forth between thinking there's a monoculture, you know, when Taylor Swift is your top 10 songs 
that are streamed and then I go between that and there is no culture. And, uh, you know, I think to try to reach the masses is almost fraught, you know, cause you, it's, it's more apparent than ever than people have to be products in order to okay. succeed. And, and you're more likely, you know, Amazon is faceless and uh, Facebook is faceless. And that's why these things succeed. Cause they're not one person, you know, people are flawed. You know, I, I, I made the argument before. Um, as a matter of fact, I had a very lengthy argument with Jerry from from Civic TV and everything else we do about whether or not it was uh, still one culture or if we really had fractured into several microcultures. And I, I lean more on the side of the ladder now, and I didn't before, um, because um, everybody We're multicultural. who is... Yes, very multicultural. This show is multicultural. <laughs> um, I, I just don't think in the past you you know you would have those figureheads like Taylor Swift as you mentioned mentioning, and they're still very popular. I don't think they've waned in popularity. They've probably only grown, but the influence has certainly uh, shortened. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know somebody like Beyonce is not leaving the same sort of cultural footprint that. I don't know. Um, John Madden did 35 years ago. You know, it's it's not the same. Um, He's never or, eaten a turducken. Yeah, right. <laughs> do, you, do you think that it's because like now it it doesn't really take someone exceptional to become famous? Like now, I feel like we live in an age where if you do one thing, it doesn't even have to be good. You know, it's like something that for whatever reason became viral, and now you're a millionaire. So it doesn't it doesn't really take like the biggest effort or you took 20 years to master this craft. And that's why people revere you or admire you. Now it feels very superficial of like the people that are making the big bucks, I guess, or people that are becoming popular are not the best, but more about like the ones that are better at getting attention. They're the most so, powerful. Right. So so. It's not like before where you would have people like John Madden, like yeah, that was a weird example. John Madden, John who, Madden. you know, uh, was a coach, I think, uh, and, you know, a whole series of video games named after him. So you recognize him. Now it's like, oh, this guy is in Fortnite now because he. Well, it's, here's the thing. I don't think it's that they don't work as hard or don't have um, a particular set of skills that that are working in their favor. I absolutely think. They do. And to just like be popular on TikTok even takes a lot of work right. and attention to detail in what it is you're doing. But the thing is that these people are occupying much more superficial mediums. And that's what's popular right now is quick and instant mediums that don't have the same kind of fulfillment uh, yeah. mentally or, or otherwise to anyone consuming it. It's designed to be disposable. So you have an yeah. abundance of that. And it's taken the place of uh, the traditional art forms for a lot of people. There's a high turnover and yeah, the attention span is shorter. So exactly with the Milo thing, you could have a billboard one day and be gone the next day. Cause I think on surface level, everyone's pretty replaceable, I think. And I think with the internet, it's going to be, you know, it's easier to, find new people to fill your roles and people are more symbolic in, in how they're presented. You know, it's like, you need to look like this and talk like this. And if you don't want to do it, we'll find someone else to, you know, and then mm -hmm. your other option is to just go the independent route, which is totally fine. But I think, yeah, exactly. It's like, there are a lot of cultures and, and I think that almost, you know, again, I think that's why I want Lars von Trier to go further. Cause how many people have movie, and are going to watch, you know, the kingdom, you know, it's like, it's such a select few. Why not really speak to your fans in this last time versus like retread and, you know, go a little softer. I don't know. Well, I, Neil Breen, I, I have Neil Breen you. is going to save the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you seen he's got a Neil Breen. It's this terrible <laughs> filmmaker that has like a new That's the, the, like three the half in the bag, half in the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like them. 
Well, he, I think he, he just uh, announced like a new movie, and then you watch the trailer, which is like four and a half minute long, of people just standing in front of uh, green screens, weirdly lit. And he's a testament robotic... to your fifty years mastering the craft, Hans. He's gotten, right. he spent, he's cut <laughs> his teeth, and he's finally, you know, he's gonna have his day. He's, a... he's get day in the green screen sun because yeah. uh, so... you know he's built his fan base over the years, and he's it's you know. A... A it's perfect example. Tighter of, and tighter. Yeah, you don't need to get better. You just like keep doing the same thing, and you know people will stick around just because it's different. Uh, that because was the, like, yeah, I, that, that's kind of the Sam Hyde point from like forever ago when he figured out people who were successful were just like idiots running their head into the wall over and over and over again until they finally broke through. It's like to be su the success, whatever that means. I don't know, you know, but it's it's just. Uh, willpower and uh and <laughs> some naivete i think in a way yeah definitely some some type of weird autism if you're there because I've... you're gonna quit at the first at right the first uh and that's it... what happens with von trier and that's what happens with these these smart people is that they let a comment about hitler from 10 years ago dominate every interview and just they don't go we'll just shut the fuck up you know or whatever mm. It's like I, uh, if you compare Neil Breen to someone like Tommy Wiseau, who, you know, that was not the type of movie that he want, wanted to make. And then because everyone made fun of him, he was like, oh, it's a it's a, actually a dark comedy I came up with. You know, this very funny movie. It's not. And then when he tried to make comedy, mm -hmm. it was just so bad that nobody cared about him. And he's just like now he's gone. Instantly from... forgotten. Yeah. He, well, he, right. he hasn't made a movie since he uh, he apparently has a script or something he's been looking to finance and it, it just hasn't come together for yeah. him now the best friends come out fiends Is oh yeah yeah yeah. About? that was yeah, a that was... that was back in 2017 i want to say but he didn't have any sort of creative involvement he was just yeah. an actor okay. in that uh i haven't seen it i've heard it's i heard one part or half of one part is okay and the rest is half of not one very part good. half of one part that's right <laughs> um, there's two best friend movies yeah there's they came out a couple one, months together two. yeah on, on the point you were making before, Dakota, about how uh, people are replaceable, I think that's especially emphasized in the, the online commentator sphere, where I think people just kind of naturally re-up their subscriptions to people or move on to other people without even thinking about it. When you start saying the same shit repeatedly over and over and over and don't change anything and nothing at all is altered with your program or, or the person you're listening to, uh, thought process or opinions, you gradually weed them out. I've done this with several people, but most recently uh, with Red Letter Media, because their best of the worst shows just seem to be the same I don't, thing. I can't watch those. Um, and, you know, my YouTube auto plays and it goes to that and it goes to half in the bag. And I like the guys. I enjoy the guys, but I like I, I already know what they're going to say about the movie or I have some idea or what the jokes are going to be. The only one I haven't gotten sick of is Rich Evans. Because he doesn't pop up as much, and yeah, but on the on the you're Kanye, usually, you're thing, usually beating them by a couple of days on the same on similar opinions. You know, there was the I listened to your Halloween, and then and then their their review was a little bit of a retread for me. So you know, good on you for getting in there first. I think somebody said Jay said all of Hans's points from a couple of days ago too. So you're not the only one to notice <laughs> regarding the Kanye thing. When he went on Tim Pool and also when like Daily Wire disavowed him, my whole thinking was they're all looking at this the exact wrong way, regardless of how, whatever controversial thing he might be saying. He's a very talented guy. He's like a once in a generation musician, especially in his genre. Yeah. And I think they're all going to regret being like, ah, Kanye West in about five months or so all it takes for somebody like kanye is to drop a a pretty good album and guess yeah. what he's right back he can go oh yeah i was off my meds i was off my meds yeah. during that time yeah i was just i was being bipolar during that week i was, I was mad about kim still yeah or, and you know for deciding to play it safe and go well hold on let me let me challenge you on that statement <laughs> <laughs> where he's essentially saying the sky is green hey did you know the sky is green i love that the sky is green and making a point of that like look i guess we were right 
you fucking idiots, you fucking stupid idiots. You j- they just had one of the biggest stars, the most talented people in the world wanting to work with them, and they just couldn't keep their fucking mouth shut for an hour and go, hey, look, here's our Kanye episode. The only person yeah. who did that correctly, I mean, I guess Alex Jones did, right? But whatever. But I was going to say the best interview to come of any of that is also the one nobody saw, which was him sitting down with Gavin McInnes. I don't know if, if either of you guys saw that. Did you check out the censored.tv interview he, that Weird. he stupidly put behind a paywall instead of just putting on YouTube? What a fucking mistake. Um, Wait, yeah. You don't think that the Lex Friedman interview that, was very good? That was the worst. <laughs> and I love that everyone hates Lex Friedman now. I'm so glad about that because I watched that the full two hour interview where Lex was like, come on, buddy. You know, the, the real, the real braveness is naming names, not, not people. And he just re- retreated this fucking thing over and over and over again. And like, was like, all right, it's been a half hour. I gotta, I gotta check Kanye on this now. And then he goes on to be offended when Kanye is like, I don't trust you. And you, you can see he's like shook by it. He's actually like jolted that someone would ever say that about him. And he's like, you know, it kind of hurts my feelings. You said <laughs> you couldn't trust me if we're gonna you know and it's just like who are you dude you nobody knew who the fuck you were only a year and a half ago so big mistake on every single one of these people from trying to uh uh, dump kanye out of the boat just because uh uh-oh he said a spicy thing yeah so kanye come come on movies is what he's saying sorry yeah Yeah, just I guess just Kanye, just common movies. We'll we'll give you a pop. Come on, for a couple hours. <laughs> we'll talk to you for a couple hours and hear what you have to say. Thank I think you. had he done the Anthony Cumia show immediately after Gavin, we'd have a real shot at, at following <laughs> that. Unfortunately, that time that time seems to be over. He fired Milo. I don't even know if he's hanging around Nick. You know, he just seems like he's he cycles quiet, through right? people. Yeah, I think it's over. So. He had it, he needs to start rebuilding. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, it's it is. He's a really good example of just real life drama superseding entertainment at this point. I think everyone's drinking. Um, uh, he 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 knows how to do the comeback story. You know, I think he's definitely like Trump larping a little bit. You know, he's just like I'm gonna try to do the. I could shoot, you know, someone in Madison Square Garden and they'd all still love me. You know, it's just, I, I think, I don't know. It's people are, people are strange. They, to your point that he could drop a good album and people would come back. It's like, I think, yeah, it's like, that's what we want in our heart. We want the hero's journey. And now we're seeing it in, in, in real life more, more so than in TV. Cause the, the creators are more, we're more interested Neuter. in the creators. There's, it's kind of like, kind of like that point on the on the Low Society episode about the the Megan and uh, I don't remember his name. Real life, Harry. real life rom com. You know, like the six hour yeah. Harry. Yeah. We're more interested in in the people than than the the product. Yeah, I think that's definitely the case now. Uh, as far as the long term of it goes. I don't think that sticks. I don't think anyone really goes back to the same, or let, let's say a podcast episode that might be interesting. For example, a uh, very popular podcast episode just in the history of the medium is Alex Jones on Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. That might be the most popular ever. Um, nobody goes Which back him? and revisits it. So what, were, you, were you saying something, Hans? The, the one with Tim Dillon, where it's just very... Oh, no, 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 no. That one's... Okay. That, that was the worst one. So that was, awkward. <laughs> that uh, was terrible. That's right so... when he, like, went over to Spotify, or he was gear, gearing up to go to Spotify, and he wanted Tim Dillon or somebody there to, like, water the yeah. episode down. Um, he just fact-checks him on everything. It's just like, just fucking let him rant. Yeah, Joe yeah. Rogan was so stupid during that time. He had what another forgotten person replaced Kyle Kalinske on for his like New Year's Eve or election night show. What a boring guest to have on <laughs> when you could have on anybody, anybody you bring on Kyle Kalinske forgotten, gone. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if this is a, 
long-term thing or if this is just a side effect of the fact that people are so cowardly now it, it's well, hard to it, say it's like what what is what is important at this point like i i've been having this issue in my own life you know i'm like i'm painting paintings i'm writing songs there's a nominal amount of interest you know it's like i just don't know i don't know where to go sometimes it's like is it all is it all from your enjoyment of creating, you know, I mean, you, you're making films, you're podcasting all the time. Um, I don't know, you know, I, I, I keep questioning, you know, like, what am I doing this for? Is this for the approval of others? Is this for my own enjoyment? And, you know, what, why am I intaking in the way that I am intaking? I can't remember the last time I read a book, you know, movies are even hard for me. You know, I, I suffer from it. I'm, I'm constantly doom scrolling and, and, uh, you know, I don't know how much more I can take. Yeah. We have a, we have a top 10, you know, 2022 movies podcast episode coming. I've seen like five 2022 movies just because everything <laughs> is so just underwhelming. So I, I think, uh, it's gotten to a point where you kind of just have to do the thing that makes you happy, even if it's yeah. not like monetarily or, you know, giving you any type fiscally of fiscally responsible yeah because it's just like and it's very doom whatever but you know it might just die tomorrow so it's like just you know whatever enjoy whatever you know russia this feels like a precursor to hans killing himself you're closer to that than me hans i'm not an old man <laughs> yeah. like you i know so I'm so like at this, at this point i'm like okay should i watch the new uh will smith movie where he pretends to be a slave for two hours or should i just watch an episode oh, of uh, God, anything I else i saw the know? worst trailer yesterday it's called i think it's the chevalier or something have, you, have either of y'all heard of this i don't no. think so oh man it looks like the most race baity kind of thing it's like in france during marie antoinette there's a black savant violin player who gets caught up in the revolution and it keeps saying based on the real untold true story and i was just like <laughs> i think i let out a groan i think i let out a groan at the end of the uh uh preview and the two masked moviegoers next to me glared at me um but, uh, that sounds like that. What is that movie with the uh, with the dancer kid in the Holocaust with Adrian Brody and he's just the pianist. Dancer right? kid. Like, he was a he was dancing in the Holocaust. Dances. That's yeah. how he survived. <laughs> <laughs> the, tap, the tap shoes. Of, the tap shoes of Auschwitz. I think is that one. Yeah, the tap dancing of Auschwitz. Yeah, where he's just like <laughs> dancing around and then there's a piano or something. I don't know. I'm I've, I'm sure I'm mixing like five Grace different Polly movies. When uh, when. Uh, <laughs> when uh the the ss the ss officers come in to get them yeah the sound oh, of I, music i watched just... i watched uh pinocchio <laughs> this afternoon in in, in uh I haven't speaking seen about that fascism um the new one the guillermo del toro was pretty fun oh pinocchio yeah i know i, I actually this afternoon i enjoyed that quite a bit and i thought the ending was like especially dark for a kid's movie i i enjoyed it yeah yeah it's a really well, that's a really good message that ties into this is that if you want to break the rules, prepare to die. Because <laughs> that's Pinocchio's sacrifice ultimately. Um, but yeah, beautiful. That whole seat. Once he gets to the carnival on, like it's just great. I think it's a little slow in the beginning, but um, especially the, the kid, the kid camp was very just colorful and a fun sequence, you know. Mm -hmm. Hans, did you check out Pinocchio? I know you you not, enjoy Guillermo. I do, not yet. Um, I, you want to know how it ends? It's on my list. Sure. Uh, all of Pinocchio's friends and family die, and he's forced to live forever. <laughs> oh, nice! It's like the Bicentennial Man, right? Oh, that fuck! Robin is Williams it really? Movie? I haven't seen Bicentennial, the Robin Williams classic from yeah. 1999, Bicentennial Man. Yeah, he's like a robot, and then everyone he loves just dies, and he's just a doesn't he get robot. a new family halfway through the film? I don't. Know. I just remember him being like a sat robot, and then he's just like everyone. I are you thinking of AI? Dead. No, no, Robin Williams. Okay, big, big he was head, in AI robot. too. Was he? Yeah, he played uh, Einstein. Right. 
Oh, well, right, the voice. Yeah. No. Even though no, Hans has only watched that. five movies in 2022, <laughs> I think I've watched 350 <laughs> movies. Yeah. I watched at least 100 from 2022, yeah. and I watched yeah, no. 250 not from 2022. So I, I have a lot to sift through. I thought it was actually a very good year for movies. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, probably the best year since 2019. Did you go see Avatar in the theater yet? Fuck no, I'm not watching that. I don't do that. I, I know you, you do that. How was Avatar, Hans? It's great. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. So, a very you see hard, hard. Yeah, it was a very heartwarming family <laughs> story about people that you know move. <laughs> they have to move for the safety of the family, and then you know it's a it's a very beautiful story about blue I feel people. Like Top Gun kind of hits that like like that storyline, right? Like that Avatar two wanted to be like that was. I don't know. It's like I think Avatar two is doing well, but it's like no one is surprised in the same way i don't know i i, I probably won't see it i i, I, don't, really, I don't think i'll be seeing i don't really either. i didn't really enjoy the first one too much it was just dances with wolves i didn't even see the first one it's you know how much first, i like the second cold one yeah i was like oh it's about <laughs> they're in the water now he said was it was it, it the best cg in a film ever ah uh, yeah yeah really? i would say so wow yeah. okay Mm. there's a lot of underwater things that I don't know if you guys have seen Aquaman. I've seen like 40 minutes of it and that is horrendous. Yeah. Uh, the, everything on the water in this movie, it's yeah, it's, it looks beautiful. It looks like, you know, a, like a new page on technology and how to shoot that type of stuff. So, you know, speaking of, if, Oh, go ahead. No. Yeah. Even if, if the story is like very basic, very like hero's journey type of thing, uh, the visuals are impressive enough where it's, it's kind of like a, movie theater type of movie i don't know if i rewatch it but it was a it was fun in the theater you know i was gonna say since you brought up aquaman i randomly got a string of messages on christmas day from the ghost of christmas past anthony cisco you know and he said hey i hope he's well um where he he is (laughs) i i he's in florida right now uh enjoying christmas time but uh he went on a rant in my inbox about the dc universe and mm. i was like huh and uh he's, he was asking my opinion on the whole like james gunn leadership of it because i guess they're getting they got rid of henry cavill gal gadot the rock like all of their stars are doing away <laughs> with uh total fresh start and he wanted to know my thoughts on on that so, so he he comes back after like five months to talk about the dc he's been reading comic books <laughs> in, in the four months he's been uh out of action so yeah Did you read into the the henry cavill witcher thing at all what about him being a video game black pilled nerd and he's misogynistic <laughs> yeah uh, it's just i love that They've been they've had it out for him for a while. There was another Netflix movie or show where he did it with um, what's her name, Eleven from Stranger Things, and they tried to spin it as like um, Enola Holmes or something. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. No, it's Millie Bobby Brown. Millie Bobby Brown. Mm-hmm. She was like, "Oh, I was trying to have a conversation with Henry Cavill," and he said, and she asked him a question or something like, "Oh, what are you going to do for for New Year's or something?" And he said, "Millie, no." Yeah, and then walked away. <laughs> it's like adult, adult things with yeah, adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah get yeah. away from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't know. There have been a lot of hit pieces about Henry Cavill that have been of zero substance. That just seem like he had a negative tone one day on set. <laughs> you know, he there were female directors, quest- and they yeah, he wasn't exactly. listening to them. Oh, he questioned my decision to turn him into, you know, the opposite of what the character was in season one. It's like. Oh, all right, I don't like how is that? He's a star, right? He's the face of it. I don't nothing that and also that that whole Twitter post was I it was set up as like I heard someone say this or someone that worked on set said this, which is just right. it's a hit piece. It's like there's Not nothing news. behind it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, I, so what were so what were your uh thoughts on the whole DC thing? On the what DC you, universe? <laughs> I said, oh, it's probably with? gonna be bad. I mean, I don't I don't know. What do you want me to say? They're they're gonna put Robert Pattinson in it now. I thought that was done. I thought that was over with. Sick of it. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I don't know. I look, I, I don't have any vested interest in anything comic. Even Batman now, I don't care. I'll check out the new Joker. 
I like the yeah. Joker. That's it. I kind of hope cool. it's very House of Gucci esque. That's all I can. That's all a boy can hope for. Is more. That's House all of I. Gucci. That's all I want from Lady Gaga's acting career, just to play a horrendous, little fat, gross type old woman. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. she's become. That's what she's best at now. Yeah. She would have been great in The Kingdom Exodus. How about a remake? That would have been more. That would have been more American Horror Story. But yeah. Yeah, I think they should remake this because they already remade we the first season, King, right? Yes, Kingdom Hospital. They gave it to what? Stephen King to helm. How about wow. that? So maybe it's time. Not good for his directing. <laughs> no, he did Maximum Overdrive and something else. He directed one other thing I want to say, or maybe he, no, he wrote Pet Cemetery. That's what he did. So. I hope Lars can do one more big thing, but like at this point, you know, I just don't. So, what more does he have to say? I don't. I don't know if he has anything more to say. Maybe we can pick up where he left off. I was rewatching uh, *Nymphomaniac* the other day and just cracking up. Like, I love that movie so much. Just the back and forth. Every time Seligman opens his mouth, I would just like. I've seen it like three times, you know, but I still like laugh. I'm just like. That reminds me of how fishes hide when you're fishing for them in the stream. <laughs> like, yeah. it must be really fun to like write a Von Trier movie, you know, because he's got to probably do like a lot of research. Like, so much, so much of the allure is just like this textbook. It feels like, I mean, he's mentioned Proust in his in *Nymphomaniac*, so he's obviously read that. But just you know this kind of memories and you know encyclopedia almost aspect to it and the way he uh approaches things you know and i mean the hospital was fun but it didn't really have that same kind of depth and i can imagine why i think he got sick halfway through filming it so you know if it falls I mean, apart at the end it's probably if, because of his parkinson's if he's um, directing i mean he doesn't even have to hold the camera right like he doesn't he can just be shaking. that's why that just, shot looked like know. that Hans. He right. had <laughs> because i, I like feel how, like i like how i like how i'll cut like five seconds into the future too like it'll be a conversation and then i'll just be like you know because he's what he's 66 cuts hilarious so I, w I would like to see him do but, but the thing that you said about him like getting more liberal instead of just pushing even further than he has before is something that has me worried about like whatever else if he if he yeah. ends up coming up with new stuff because his whole shtick for what 20 years 30 years has been pushing the envelope for his style right so conforming when you're that type of person i i, I don't know if i, I would think be it's excited he's about old. you know i think it's up to people who are younger to kind of be punk rock in their approach to things because I think everyone it's the what TDS right it's just mm. it, I think there's a mm. sort of if you're not on the internet and you don't really understand that almost it's a reflection of a reflection at this point I think you know because there's the values have changed or you know it's like what what, what was black is white so now we have to go back to black if that makes sense, but we have to do it in a different way. I don't know. It's uh, it's frustrating, you know, because you do get a lot of good art, but you just feel like there is a sort of safety about it um, at times. And uh, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know if he has another nymphomaniac or house. House of Jack build is all about the creative process, you know. So yeah, how do you like improve upon that? And he literally goes down to hell at the end of it. I mean, he loves doing those dramatic endings. I mean, uh, Melancholia has a planet crash into it at the end. So it's not like he hasn't destroyed himself or the viewer or whatever and rebuilt before. But this this ending felt very unearned. You know, just her lying on a bed and it gets on fire and it gets pulled down to hell. And he shows up and he's Satan. And... The helicopter was really cool, though. Those those shots, whenever the helicopter would come over, like I got chills. You know, he wasn't would... shaky either at the end. I was checking that while we were talking. It was just like, Can well, you he was tell strapped that... in the chair. He had like a, <laughs> he's in a car seat. I'm pretty sure he was in a booster seat. 
Right here. He's not very shaky. I was checking his hand to see if it was. <laughs> he's doing. He's he's fine for like three seconds. You know. Yeah, he's I'm okay. Sure he that was a hand double. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm I'm not particularly optimistic that Lars is going to suddenly rebound in health and have enough strength to, to do a full-fledged film. He probably had a lot of help with this one, uh, is my thought, since typically series are a little more hands-off, even if, you know, in Europe they handle it a bit different and, you know, it's entirely his guiding that creatively. I don't know. I would be pleasantly surprised if that was the case. I know he's got some contribution to a short film anthology though that was supposed to drop a while back and i don't think it ever came out and that was done after house of jack built so if nothing else there might be one last final thing similar to michael cimino where he threw a short film into some anthology and it wasn't particularly good either it was actually uh not good at all but i don't know there, there, there might be something to come. Here we all I mean, if Francis, if Francis Ford Coppola is directing at what ninety, what how old is he? He's almost ninety. He's, I think he's in his late eighties. But Francis Ford Coppola is probably in like the best health of his life. He's actually skinny now. <laughs> uh, he had a heart attack and he got he, he lost weight. Cigars. He's, 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 he's doing all right. All things he's and that cast is stacked. He's got a great cast for Megalopolis. They just started shooting that a while ago, and they're expected to go until February. Do you know what old director has nothing to lose? Polanski. Oh. <laughs> wow. Ah, uh, truly. <laughs> you know, he couldn't get distribution on on his on his most recent film because they decided now that they care. Like fifty, 50 years, years later. From the incident. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's been half of a century. I think it's time. No, they just kicked him out of some. Uh, they kicked him out of the Motion Pictures Association. Well, uh, he's just hanging out in France with all the other perverts. Have you seen any of his recent films? No, I don't. I don't know too much of his work, honestly. I liked. I like Knife in the Water a lot, actually, though. Carnage was okay. That was. That was not oh, really I recent. Oh, I did see Carnage. Movie. That was, that was a stage play, play too. That yes. Was originally, it has that. It has the same problem the whale has. It's the play turned into the movie syndrome, mm -hmm. where it all takes place in one location and the cinematography is boring because of it. Because it was a play. Um, that had John C. Riley in it though, right? Carnage. Yeah, John C. Riley, Christoph Waltz, uh, Kate Winslet. You know the the only examples that I can think of of recent movies anyway, recent being like the last twenty five years. Uh, of plays that were well made as films are uh, the Tracy Letts plays that William Friedkin directed, Bug and Killer Joe. Uh, those translated pretty well to cinema and didn't feel too much like plays. Maybe Bug more so, but those were both uh, pretty decent quality. I think uh, Hateful Eight was started as a play too, though, so that one ended up being pretty good. Did that start as a play? I think I, I think the the idea there was it was uh, the script the script got leaked and then he was going to do it as a play because uh, that's what it is. I think it was was it Michael Madsen or or Tim Roth? I don't know somebody he had in the mix originally. Their agent leaked the script, uh -huh. and so they got cut out of it. I read it when it leaked actually, so I was like that was like the one I was like least excited to see because I had mm -hmm. read the whole read the whole story before it came out. Um, I think Anomalisa was a play too. The uh, what's his name? Charlie Kaufman. The stop Kaufman. motion movie was a play. Mm -hmm. But that also has it's like it's too talky, you know. Hans, what was the last play you've seen? <laughs> uh, I saw the what is it, the woman in black? I saw that in London. That was pretty cool. Oh, you did go. All right. What, did that have yeah. Daniel Radcliffe in it too? No, of course not. No, it's just had like a random British person, British white person. But the the set was really cool. It would just like switch, and I, I don't like 
I don't like plays. I'm not a huge fan of plays, but that when they play with the with the set and like make it creepy like that was uh I did I did enjoy that. So I won't I think I've only seen like three maybe plays in my entire life and that was one of them. That was good. That was better than the movie. The Daniel Radcliffe movie. Did you ever so, see the sequel to the movie? No. <laughs> the Woman in Black 2, they decided to make a cash grab sequel around the same time. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm well, worried. Maybe maybe our Halloween special of movies will be on uh, Woman in Black 2. I don't even know the title. They couldn't get Daniel Radcliffe back for it. I don't Angel know. of Death. That's what it's called. Oh, that's With... creative. Will this be uh will this be the last Christmas theme thing you're covering for the year? Cuz this does take take place at Christmas. I don't think we've mentioned that it yet. Does, it does. Yeah. yeah. You know, I I did just think of that a moment ago. I guess so. What cuz everything else we have Everything else we have lined up for the end of the year are lists. It's going to be the best watched in 2022, the best of 2022, and then also the worst of 2022. But that might be a 2023 show. Worst sounds good. We love we're doing worst. a we're doing an episode with Spencer maybe about that terrible Joe Bagos movie, right? Yeah, that'll be his show. So there will yeah. be another Christmas uh, podcast, but it it probably won't be our show. I think it's going to be. The uh, Death Curse comic show. Fucking painful. Fucking an hour and a half of just garbage. That was really... Did you watch it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What is it? Bloody Christmas heavy... Christmas what is it? Bloody heavy Christmas. bloody flow. Yeah. Yep. God, that was... Hans, so did, this, did the kingdom remind you of Santa Claus versus the devil? Because I was just thinking that <laughs> the plots are really similar. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's points of it. We're just like, you oh. You think Brad just like saw the... that movie and that gave him the idea for this? It wasn't yes. the return. It's like they're like slave children, <laughs> but they're actually... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hospital, inpatient, slaves, yeah. you know, you're kind of at the yeah. will of you know, white yeah. men in charge. So you can see the, you know, you got <laughs> Satan in the Swedish. Yeah. Man, they <laughs> fucking just threw all these characters in the trash at the end. Didn't they, they didn't even give Pontavi Don did the lady got stuck in the chair and she, what she falls asleep. Like yeah, she, all she, I wanted she to see was nice. some, I did not care about any character, but her, and I just wanted to see her either fall or get up there, but they didn't do they didn't do either. And I was she should have fell down well, the bo- elevator shaft. That would have been more some appropriate. Gore, you know, give me something. Like he 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 smashes his car into some statue of some old folklore thing that I don't understand. Old Lord yeah. the destroyer, like, wow, you know, he's stuck on got- the bridge with the girl who keeps, you know fucking with him. Uh yeah, kind of Yeah. Financially, he's allied, but not really. Financially, yeah. she's the fucking girl? his wallet. Really, you yeah. Know, that's that's the modern that's the modern take. Is that uh, is that women just want to fuck your your wallets these days? That's you that's got, Fontier's hot take. You got Boulder, who's the Hagrid of this movie series. No, right? he's Boulder. He's watching that game. Of <laughs> right. Oh, fair enough. Boulder. Yeah. And, and then he just looks back and turns to stone. He's like, "Why? Why do well, you have to kill?" That's a little biblical Boulder. there for you. That's uh. That's when they're running out of Medusa. No, oh, it's Sodom and Gomorrah. It's, it's Sodom and Gomorrah, and if you turn back, right. you're gonna turn into a pillar of salt. Right. But she doesn't have to look back because she's seen the show already. She goes home and goes into her bed and burns to death in her bed. Right? It's like a she, nightmare yeah, on Elm she, Street. She, she... Yeah, nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> Well, you know, speaking of also, this is not related at all, but I was just thinking back uh, to to gold digging, as as you know, you just cited. Uh, but Babylon, that's definitely going to be on my worst of twenty twenty two list because I watched that three hour big piece of shit huh. film, and Who directed um, that? Damien Chazelle, who's so much oh. better than what he did with that movie. Yeah, uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, Whiplash and La La Land and First Man was a bore. That that movie sucked. But this movie really sucks. Like First Man sucks because it's just dull. This movie sucks because he thinks he's doing something f- like funny with it and it's not. Is it a satire? Mm. You can't do satire anymore. Life is satire, you know? I wouldn't say it's a, you know, it doesn't go fully in that bin, but he's trying to do a version of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Boogie Nights. And he's like even making callbacks to Brad Pitt playing uh, Aldo Rain and Inglorious Bastards because he's like speaking Italian at the start of the film. 
even though he's not Italian and uh, Jesus. It, it, like that, it's really that, bad. That and the David O. Russell movie that also came out Amsterdam. this year. Yeah, this was like this. I thought it was the same movie. I didn't realize it was two different movies. I don't care about any of them. I'm, I don't think I'm going to be watching that. Did y'all do? Did y'all do an episodes on Banshees of Inisherin? No, I only checked that out recently, and I I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was pretty good. It's it's kind of like a standard. I don't want to say Oscar bait film, but it's like a decent, like dry kind of uh, comedy. But it, it it feels. I don't know. It felt a little standard to me. Yeah. Hans, did you check it out by any chance? I... <laughs> no, I haven't seen it. Well, are you, are you dying? What's <laughs> you got me mid fucking? I was drinking water. And... <laughs> so are you trying to rush through the sip to answer? Wow, I appreciate it. That's commitment. <clears throat> He's dying. Uh, no, it looks like. Ah, oh, that's bad. Uh, I I uh, started last night and then fell asleep within the first couple of minutes. So um, that, you that's not, how you not know yet. it's good. Not yet, but uh, I'll. It's definitely one that I've been watching. That and Tar, because of what you've said about yeah. Tar. Yeah, I Tar see, I thought was great. I want to see Tar. That's about cancel culture. Yeah, that's what I heard. It's it's not overtly about that. It kind of sneaks up on you. You should do a show on the White Lotus because that's the show everyone's talking about. You're you're doing this, you're doing this Von Trier stuff. No one's gonna click on that. You know, no, we want to talk hat. about we want to talk about Jennifer Coolidge. That was that's finale. great. I, I she saw the first some gay guys. Oh, you just <laughs> fucking spoiled the whole season two for me. I I, I I passively watched the first season and I was like, this is funny. Like this is really uncomfortable and and funny. Uh, yeah. I haven't seen the second one because well, it's Mike not White's available great. for us. Chuck and Buck is great if y'all haven't seen it. Um, I think we're going to do a show on Chuck and Buck at some point. That's like a good hallmark of uh, early aughts or late 90s indie dark comedy uh, filmmaking. He yeah. didn't direct that. He wrote it and he stars in it. Uh, it was he actually on a lollipop for a good portion of the film. Yeah, he does. I don't know. There's also like, I don't know maybe we'll get into it in a future show uh yeah. it's directed by chris whites i believe his name is who co-wrote american pie or co-directed american pie and also did star wars no. rogue one no it's directed by a guy called miguel arteta oh yeah yeah no He's chris the, white stars with mike yeah. mike white in the film two Excuse whites me. they two later whites. started white and black and white productions with jack black uh oh, that's right did they do nacho libre Mm -hmm. and i think napoleon maybe napoleon dynamite is the same i don't know that was uh i think that was gary sanchez product or they acquired it no 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 napoleon no they didn't do napoleon dynamite they did foot fist way with danny mcbride uh which is better (laughs) it's much better it's much better yeah there was another uh dark 90s comedy that y'all did a show on that i really enjoyed this year it's um jesus what is it called it's the girl who's like bullied at school oh welcome to the dollhouse yes todd salons who looks a hell of a Uh, lot like mike white he looks like a sicker mike white you want to pull up a quick comparison here hans i think we did it during the show on that but let's do it again yeah todd salons is great um i just watched happiness for the first time in a while uh, if if you have uh, seen that, I never that. saw that one. I saw Life During Wartime, which is the sequel. Mm. But I really would like to see Happiness. Uh, all of his Today. movies are pretty awesome. decent on the whole. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's got a little Paul Giamatti in him too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, very very similar uh, look and hairline, mm-hmm. but I I find uh, I don't know I enjoy Mike White uh, a little bit more. Although I think Todd Salons' films are are probably better on the whole. Yeah, I mean Mike White's a little more TV at this point, right? Mm-hmm. And yet another. I listened to his Perfume Nationalist episode, which was pretty fun. That was a crazy get for Jack too. 
to manage for the show. That yeah. guy has everything to lose by popping on that show. Yeah, he uh, doesn't care. No, I, Just apparently two gay not. guys shooting the shit, man. There, it was a fun, fun hour and a half on on a sissy sissy SpaceX. I think was their theme. They did Badlands and uh, Three Women. I think that was it. Yeah. I, I I think that also just goes to show too that nothing so, you do is necessarily, um, you know, a trip to the morgue guaranteed, uh, depending on how it's handled. Because if you think about any other TV showrunner going on a show called The Perfume Nationalist, now granted, I think part of that has to do with Jack keeping the episode behind a paywall, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't think that went out into the main feed. Um, that, if, if that was like a more, I don't know, uh, public sure. creator of the show, uh, then maybe there would be more controversy there or it would be a problem, but nobody's really looking into what Mike White is up to, even if he has a yeah. fan base now, especially yeah. after winning Emmys for the show this year, he then goes and does perfume nationalist. It's kind of, I don't know. It's, it, it's funny. I think if you, if you keep to yourself enough they let you just kind of do whatever because they know it won't get detected by that sort of that particular strain of individual that is out to destroy but i feel like it's also it's a it's a show not for everyone right like it's a specific type of person that's going to enjoy what the white lotus is so I maybe think but really I, I don't i don't know if that matters i i think there's plenty of things where it's like it's an r-rated movie or it's an adult program or whatever, but they still say, hey, listen, this is dangerous because X, Y, Z reason, this person's a bad influence. We have to keep them away from civilization. They'll find it. If they, there's a spin to it, and it doesn't even have to be a good spin, they're going to use that, and they can use that. Yeah. Too scary. Maybe. Um, yeah. I just, just don't be afraid. Tell me a nice I story, Lorez. I'm scared. A nice story? Uh, uh, I don't know. All my stories are dark. Your 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 set's looking like uh, Red Bar Radio tonight a little bit. This this set this set the set is my mother's basement. That's what this set is right now. Uh, the only contribution is a very nice. Your mom work at RCA. She's got the on air sign. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Hans, do you have like a nice story? And then we can cap the episode because we're past the ninety minute mark now. Have, have, have I Love ever had a sleep. nice story? I don't think I've ever had a nice story. Tell me one of those. Three. Tell me one of those quaint third world stories that you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're playing with marbles and the, you know, in the. Uh, what was it like? Christmas, the... nineteen thirty-seven, huh? Yeah, just playing with everyone's <laughs> fucking shit uh, on the sidewalk. The marbles gonna get all dirty, and we will get cuticles full of like whatever. Yeah, no, I don't. I mm, I'm not the person to go to when it comes to like, um, you know, a life story that's gonna make you feel good. I guess. No, you're good. <laughs> uh, well, just how, yeah. how about you? How about you? How about you tell tell us what you felt? What was the strongest emotion you felt during Avatar Two? Oh, um, there there's one point where one of them dies, and then they're like, "Oh, oh no, he's dead," and you cried. Oh. You're like, oh, he's dead, and he he's dead. <laughs> Is that what you said in the theater? Yeah, oh, that doesn't oh, make me feel good at all. Yeah, <laughs> and then the movie ends, and you're just like, oh wow, he's actually dead. He's, yeah, just like Superman was actually Sully, dead at the end of Batman v Superman, they and then they brought him back. Kill Jake Sully, don't they? No, you can't. You can't kill Jake Sully. You have like seven sequels coming with him in it, oh. right? No, yeah. it's him. It's based off how you said that. I know it's him now. He's too old. He's like yep. he's 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 the Harrison Ford death of the new franchise. <laughs> he's washed up, is what he is. He did Avatar, and then he spent yeah. the next twelve he years on on Avatar two, three, four, five, and now he's forgotten. Didn't he do the? I don't even the know what the actor's name is. The actor's name Jake Sully. Does Sam Worthington. Character? He did Terminator yeah. Salvation around the same time. Yeah, he did that Clash of the Titans, uh, two movies that no one oh. liked, and. Oh, now he's in Call of Duty, Black Ops Four. So cool, that's, uh, that's he's great. He's in a video that's, game. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. I took. How's it going for him? 
I choked up at the end of Pinocchio. That that kind of got me a little bit. I'll be honest. For which death? Was it what? Was it Geppetto? Was it Jiminy Cricket? Even though they didn't call him Jiminy Cricket? No, he was he was uh... Salvatore J. Cricket or something. No, just the little, yeah, just the little coda. The whole that whole last sequence is uh yeah, we need more of that kids' movies. Dark well, kids about death. The only yeah. movie I think that most audiences agree is is sadder than Pinocchio, <laughs> is Clerks Three, which was uh, Hans. Does this Gosh. fall on your best of list <laughs> oh, for the no. year? <laughs> Can't believe you actually purchased. He, that. You have to go he, into it like wasn't a, me. Google. It was Santa Claus. Oh, I got right. it from Santa Hans. Clerks Three. Yeah. Santa had to find an Indiegogo from like two years ago to <laughs> <laughs> to pay for that. <laughs> yeah. Hans ruins Clerks 3 in the first five minutes. He did. <laughs> Not even five minutes. I said, it's five Hans. Seconds. I said, the Dante said, to my Randall. Die. And he said, I don't want to be the one who dies. <laughs> I think Kevin Smith ruined Clerks 3 in the first oh, five minutes. That was man, not me. That's a spicy, yeah, spicy take right. there. I don't know. I think we got to revisit <laughs> Clerks 3 for two more I'm, episodes. I'm, do y'all ever, uh, ever do a Tusk episode? No. No, I would love to do a Tusk a episode. With the disgraced Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> the French, French Johnny Depp. Now he's actually, you know, he could probably get him for tusk two at this he's rate i'm disgraced no he's that, in he's in he's in the savage dior uh perfume commercials right they resumed them yeah i saw one on tv the other day it was it was glorious they could return to the what king. is what is justin long doing too right barbarian yeah uh i watched uh you know the tv happened to be on channel four cbs uh one night when i turned the television on and he was on the james corden show and there was some female guest and it was just James Corden and the female guest talking over Justin Long the entire time. And Justin Long would try to insert with like a funny little anecdote or quip. And the audience did not enjoy him. They did not laugh at any of his amusing anecdotes or quips. And James Corden would just like soft one up his stories like oh. and try and like deconstruct them and go like, actually, no, you're wrong for why you think this. And it was just like the most uncomfortable thing. Like, you don't need to do this, Justin Long. Just that's wrong. Just wait for the next horror movie phone call. You'll be fine. Uh, but I did watch a YouTube video recently where Kevin Smith, for a Christmas celebration, he bought a movie theater, and I think that's like his soft divorce from his wife because he said, "I've been living in my movie theater for three months now." <laughs> <laughs> um, outlined his his MCU style plan for the next wave of kevin smith films and what are oh they God. tusk 2 is that real yeah it's gonna be called tusks jay and silent <laughs> bob 3 oh god Mall rats 2 <laughs> and um where are the other two he's gotta have a new franchise oh all, moose all jaws he will do moose jaws which is jaws but a moose and the last one was dogma 2 I don't, I don't remember. That's the A24 one. Yeah, maybe. That would be nice. Except Weinstein still has the rights to Dogma. He, he won't give them up. He said $7 million and you got it. No one wants to pay that. It'll buy you a lot of cigarettes in prison. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he, you know, he's, he, I was going to say he should be due any day now, but I don't think so. I think he actually got hit with the max sentence now that I'm thinking about yeah. it. They, they said well, he, got, he got he got re, he got he uh, got convicted in New York and then he got convicted in California. Damn. Right? Mm -hmm. And you would There's think the that only those two places he's ever worked. He's got to go to Alabama now. You you would think that those tennis balls they put on his walker would make people feel sorry for him, but nope, not even not even that. <laughs> well, Please don't that's... Have, just you know, to whoever ever watches this, don't send me to jail at ninety. If I ever fuck up, just. Let Let's me do it me. now when yeah. I have a fighting chance. Don't send me when I'm blind or my fucking nuts have rotted off or whatever the fuck, you yeah. know, like, let me go in there. Let me have a <laughs> Shawshank Redemption type of movie. You know what I mean? I mean, Bill Cosby's <laughs> experience was probably very Shawshank. It was very Morgan Freeman in Shawshank. Yeah. He got out. 
He's free. Well, yeah. now I got in there, they didn't serve the pudding pops. Well, he looks like the size ball when he walked in. Uh, All he had to lose was one of those eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the key. Apparently, they forged a bunch of evidence against him. So I don't know. Maybe he's been innocent the whole well, time. You know, I've always believed that Cosby got in trouble because he tried to buy NBC. And, you know, that's they, right. That's that's they, been the that's story. The reason they hit him with all those. They didn't want him having that much power. You know, it's like you can do the jokes, but, you know. We'll put you on kids say the darndest things, but you can't own kids say the darndest things. <laughs> not. All right. Well, yeah, I think we got our, his... our happy story ending to the episode <laughs> yeah. out of uh, Weinstein being convicted for, I think, 80 years. So he'll be 160 when he gets out. Um, <laughs> he goes and meets yeah. Morgan. He goes and meets Bill Cosby in Mexico. What do we? What? Oh, there he is. There's the pretty, pretty eye, pretty blue eye. Last eye. <laughs> Johnny Blue <laughs> Eyes. My dog Big is 16 years old. Something. He has the same Hail eyes as Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> wow ah well that's uh that's that's been movies for this week uh dakota thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about the kingdom exodus with us where can people where do you want to direct people all right all right my band Oozebox has a new song out it's on soundcloud follow us on instagram who's <laughs> underscore box o-o-z-e also i do art i've got this Little example here. This is my uh, full metal jacket painting. It says Iron Become Cringe. You can, you know, Iron Become Death, whatever. Uh, so I do the oil paintings too. I'm on Twitter as Plastic Repeater, Instagram, Plastic Repeater. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. So Absolutely. I think you're now in, uh, what are you, in the Five Timers Club? I think for, for is guest it five? appearances. I thought it was three, but I think you're right. I think it is five. I feel like we either cut one up or i don't know i'm gonna take a look at it's all on imdb so awesome i'm glad i, I keep, have a presence there now i keep a record <laughs> just in case the re the the top guest the last appearance one I did was elvis that's was right so i think Cisco. i think it's either four uh, it might be four now then i think because of elvis i think it's four uh jake miller has the record at 28 jerry's like not <laughs> far behind all at right. 20 five or six i don't know but i had them do like guest appearances like hopefully, host uh, for me while i was sick hopefully so. we can uh our schedules will be more aligned next year and we'll we'll get up into the double digits yeah want. let's get let's get to 26 let's aim for 26 <laughs> weekly <laughs> yes. 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 Cover <laughs> <laughs> all right uh that has been movies for this week thank you for listening <laughs>